monarchs of the internet. Today I'm going to show you how to write a poem and I thought it would be really cool to show you the whole thing from start to finish so here's me opening up my word document. I did come up with this one phrase beforehand um, and I'm kind of going to base the whole poem off of that but and then as it was kind of stewing in my head because I didn't sit down immediately to write this I did come up with another phrase to match and rhyme with good. So that is kind of what I'm going to base my whole poem off of. But other than that, I just sat down and now I am totally making things up from here. So this is a little bit faster, obviously, than I actually did it. Um, the whole process took me about a little over 30 minutes. So this is about three times as fast as that at 10 minutes. So I then started to write out some other rhyming words so you can either go in couplets or go every other line as you see here um the middle line does not rhyme with good or understood um i ultimately decided to go mostly with couplets but i left the other the same for and i'll tell you why in a minute um and so i tried to write down some words that rhymed with understood or good or some other words that rhymed with some other things i was thinking of perfect um, and as you can see, Word Hippo is a really great site to do this. And you can also filter by syllables and you can say how many syllables you want your word to have, which can be important later and I'll show you why. Also, uh, you can see that unlike when I tried to write them down on my own and didn't have enough words to pick from that could rhyme, now there's way too many. Um, so those can also be great tools. Um, you just have to kind of uh, see, I think I did use something from Word Hippo, um, and, but I think I ultimately just decided to try for this section to just try and write out some things and to kind of get the idea that I wanted the poem to have and the ideas that I wanted to get across in the poem. I'm writing this poem right now uh, to celebrate my parents' anniversary, um, cause they really like when I write poems for them. So this is their anniversary poem. And... Uh, yeah, so here I decided to go with couplets, so anniversary and family, and um, I also decided to go every other, I'm not exactly sure what the technical term is, but you'll see in a second, and so here, those numbers that I'm putting at the end, those are what the... Um, number of syllables in the line is because I really think that it gives it a nice flow and a nice rhyme to it. Um, I guess not technically rhyme, but it just makes it sound nice if you are aware of how many syllables are in each line and you can use that in different ways. They don't necessarily have to be the same though sometimes you can mess with even an odd numbered syllables or you can make them similar syllables or you can have them be exactly the same. I ended up trying to make the couplets exactly the same but I'm not worrying about that right now because I'm just trying to make get the idea of the poem. Um, just kind of get the words out on the paper of what I want it to say and then tweak it later. So I have right here kind of hooray, let's celebrate your anniversary and then kind of, but then kind of switching totally gears. I know sometimes you worry if you did everything right. That's something that I wanted to say in the poem because it is something that has come up a couple times in conversation, but I needed some kind of bridge between those two thoughts. So here is me trying to create a bridge between those two thoughts. Um, and as you can see, I'm actually going to uh, rhyme uh, these together. Let's see, fights. There it is. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is have fights, right, and fright. See how, I guess it doesn't quite, it, they don't quite line up, but knights and fights rhyme and right and fright rhyme. Um, and, but you still have the it in there. Things don't necessarily have to rhyme or be completely the same in order to make a nice poem and to make it kind of sound nice if you it, poetry is kind of like finding things that are the same making things the same and yet making things different at the same time so you have to find the balance between making things different and making things the same another great thing to use word hippo for is to find um adjectives um it will sorry i saw the word adjective is to find sil silla silla uh, what are words? To find thing words that mean the same thing as other words. Synonyms. That's the word that I'm looking for. Uh, word hippo is really great for finding synonyms and definitions as well, but I mostly use it for synonyms. Um, and 
so here I'm going to do fights and knights and then I what I use the synonyms for is I was trying to find something that rhymed with family so that I could go back and forth between the two different kind of rhyming or similar sounding couplets because I thought that would have a nice kind of ring to it especially when read out loud so I tried to find something for loving I couldn't really find anything and I eventually went with friendly just because that's the only Lee I could think of <laughs> that would make sense. Now I can kind of think of some other ones, but I think friendly is nice too. And then of course I have to f had to find something that rhymed with friendly, um, and I thought that was a really good bit right there. So now you can see I'm going back and forth, anniversary family, then fights nights, then friendly and destiny, and then you have um, the other two ites. Um, and I thought that had a nice ring to it. Now here is where I'm doing the tweaking. So I'm writing down how many syllables they have at the end of each of these couplets. And again, you don't have to do couplets. Sometimes I do every other. And of course, there's many, many, many other poetry styles. This is just how I like to do mine. So here I'm just writing down. I did tweak the first one so they both had 10. And then you can see the one couplet has 11 and something else. And then these two have 14 and 14. And then I that one has 14 and 13. Um, and so what I decided to do was I really wanted to make each individual couplet um, have the same amount of syllables just so it would have a nice flow to it. So you can really be surprised with how much you can actually tweak your sentences without actually changing the content. Um, just by like messing with prepositions or plurals or uh, like just messing with tiny things that don't actually change like the meaning or the intent of the sentence but give it this different amount of syllables so that it matches nicely so there you can see i have 13 and 13 and another thing to be aware of too is you generally want to cut back on syllables not add syllables so you want to try and say what you want to say in the least amount of syllables possible generally again not a full full-on rule for all the time um but generally you want to like generally you do want to try and find something that has less syllables rather than more syllables um, but here I think I did ultimately decide to um, I can't remember if I decided to go with 14 or 13 we'll see in a second but so sometimes you can add a little bit more content or give some better descripting words or adjectives um, or some more visual words or just some more colorful language and sometimes that's a reason to add some syllables I think that's what I decided to go to there um, and so now uh, you can see I have all of my syllables all lined up and I left the end the same though and also the middle line you can see the, the last little bit is not a couplet and not all the lines rhyme uh, but I decided to leave the last bit because again poetry is about making things similar and yet leaving differences um, and a lot of times in poetry the differences are what you focus on and so and that's my little title i thought it was nice um, but the ending is different because it naturally brings attention to it because you had couplets all the way throughout and then the end suddenly doesn't rhyme anymore and so then that gives it the impression like it let it sticks in your mind um in my opinion so that's why i did it the way that I did and of course it's always a bonus when it has a nice look to it as you can see it's small at the top and then gets wider and then gets smaller again I always like when it has a nice look to it um and now I'm just kind of formatting it uh, I think really the biggest takeaway here is you can do poetry in many many different ways and this is just kind of how I like to do it but you have to find your own style I've been writing poetry for a while now and I kind of have found this style over time, but you can definitely use some of these tips and kind of adapt them to whatever style that you have. And um, yeah, so pretty much I'm just going to save it and print it out. And now it should be coming up on the screen in a couple moments. Yes, fade to black or fade to white. That's what I did. Yes. And here... I printed it out and me and my brother signed it so I gave him credit for it too.
And of course, as always, here's a picture of my cat to end off the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I have lots of other videos about crafting, and I also have a book cover video as well if you're more into writing, and I hope to see you again really soon. Have a wonderful day! Bye!